Ahava and blessings. Welcome to this episode of Hold the Shehina. This podcast is offered to support us in this crazy ride that we call this human experience, this ascension process. This podcast is here to support us in embodying, integrating, remembering. Master, and I am your guide. And since this week is Thanksgiving week here in the US, I wanted to speak on colonialism, Thanksgiving, and the implications of going into this holiday with our family our friends, and what may come up during this time and how best we can navigate these frequencies, these energies as beings on this planet doing our work and evolving and expanding. So let's first get into the concept of colonialism. So none of us, not anyone in almost any country, is native to their land. They may have lived there for hundreds of years, maybe even many, many hundreds of years. But ultimately, we all have journeyed from one place to another. This is particularly, well, this is significantly more evident here in the North America, South America, Canada, um, Latin America, Central America, the Caribbean. This is more evident here simply because of the nature of the colonial powers of Britain, of France, of, and it's actually also very evident in Africa and in the Middle East and in India because of the colonial powers of Portugal, Spain, France, in Great Britain. Those are, Belgium also took part in a lot. So I wanted to speak about this, not from a place of anger or calling for any of that, um, because it is my belief that when we judge a situation, whether it is something as delicate as what we're speaking about colonialism today or whether it is simply um, an interaction you have with another person and that interaction did not go well what happens when we judge is we keep ourselves in this position of duality in this fight in this inextricable link that allows us to continue to perpetuate the cycle of separation, of duality, of karma, all of this stuff, all of these lower frequencies, these karmas, these traumas perpetuate by the process of us judging a situation. Now, there are many circumstances under which it is very difficult to remain in neutrality because well, some of us, especially at this point in time, think that being neutral means not not saying anything. It means like not having an opinion. And that's not necessarily what neutrality is. Neutrality is the space of being the observer and not allowing yourself the space to choose one side over the other. You can feel your emotions because as human beings, this is part of our evolution. It is about feeling our feelings, working through them, understanding what our emotions, our emotions or energy and motion, what they are pointing us to, what needs healing, what needs integration, what needs nourishment, what needs attention. 
So all of this is important. In a way, it is very important and it is also very important to do your best to remain neutral. So it's not easy. It's a process and it is very, particularly for those of us who have been displaced, who have suffered discrimination, racial injustice, economic injustices, all of these, um, it's very triggering. It's a very, this is a very triggering time because the Great Britain stole this land of the U.S. from the native peoples. The same thing happened in Latin America. These lands were inhabited. Christopher Columbus didn't discover jack shit. <laughs> I'm sorry to be blunt, but this is, this is the way I roll. And if you like it, please continue to listen. I just, I don't believe in sugarcoating anything. I believe in really speaking out in the way that feels most harmonious and true to you, obviously with respect, however, still remaining true to yourself. So Columbus didn't discover anything. And these lands were constantly visited by the Scandinavians, by the Vikings. They even say that the ancient Egyptians and many African peoples also traveled to this land. Um, the Maya in, in Mexico traveled to Southeast United States where Georgia is. So there was a lot of migration that the Western educational system doesn't tell us about we have been led to believe that these were heathens and they needed to be, you know, civilized. However, many of these cultures were incredibly advanced and incredibly civilized. Now, to say that slavery only happened, that was only the transatlantic slave trade is also not true. Slavery has been practiced for millennia, the Middle Eastern peoples did it, the Egyptians, the, the Chinese, the Japanese, the, the Western people, the people of Western Europe, the Native Americans here in the, in, the, in the new world, as we call it. It's not really the new world, but you know what I mean. It's been... Um, how do I say this? It's been a, a dark part of our humanity. It's the, it's that, that un, unenlightened expression of our power, our ego. And this is ultimately what colonialization means. So colonialization is the subjugation, subjection, the act of bringing into subjection or subjugation by colonializing, by indoctrinating, by bringing a people into alignment, or it's not even really alignment, by forcing your point of view on another population, a pre-existing population. And many of us suffer from this deep-seated trauma and anger because we are the descendants of these actions. And this is particularly true of people of African-American heritage, but it is also very true of people of Native American heritage as well as Latin American heritage. So anywhere where populations mixed and particularly, this is, this is very true in Latin America because Latin America is, is very mixed in terms of, it's very mixed in terms of ethnic heritage. There were significant populations of colonial um, in, imperial powers, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, the French, 
the even the the Chinese, the the Japanese immigrated. There were also significant populations of enslaved people from African countries. There was the Native Americans. So the the bloodlines, the ethnic composition of the people of Latin America, Central America, the Caribbean is incredibly diverse. And because of the colonial oppression, suppression, subjugation, there is there is a there is a brand of racism that also includes colorism. And it includes a lack of respect for traditional indigenous music, culture, food, all of it. And this is something that we need to look at, especially here in the United States, because in the United States, there are people from all over the world. And like I was saying before, everywhere in the world, we have experienced this kind of trauma. There is no population that can say that in its history, it never engaged in warfare, it never engaged in rape, genocide, all of it. Every population to one degree or another has engaged in this. It is unfortunately that darker aspect of humanity where we do not transcend the lower chakras. We don't transcend the the desire to dominate, to manipulate, to control, to force, to put your beliefs, your way of life over another. And this, our inability as human beings to recognize this is what in many ways is perpetuating the disharmony, the war, the the crimes and the atrocities that are being committed. And whether it's in the name of religion, whether it is in the name of nationalism, it's still the same underlying, underpinning cause for it. And until we can learn how to harmonize these aspects of ourselves, because we all have, whether it's lifetimes we've lived through this or our specific genetic bloodline, in this human body has experienced this and both. So it is really important, particularly now when there is, there is such a, there is such a swing in, in deeply opposing directions. It's either people feel incredibly moved in one way or another. There is no integration there is no like bringing into union at least none that i'm seeing yet and i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that we as a collective humanity can really begin to bring into harmony those opposing parts of ourselves because all of everything that is going on outside of us is going on within us There is no separation. Everything that we encounter is a mirror. It is a contract. We entered into a soul contract to experience what we experience in life in order for our soul to evolve. Now, this perspective brings us a level of empowerment and a level of self-control, a level of self-mastery that we truly are the architects of our destiny, of our lives, of our experience. And if we are the architect of it, that means that whatever we see that we do not feel is in alignment with the life that we wish to create, we can transform, we can shift, we can change. We have that ability. And nowhere is this more evident than I think with this Thanksgiving holiday that is coming up, there is a lot of, well, you know, don't celebrate Thanksgiving because it is celebrating the genocide of Native American populations. Yes, that is one aspect of it. However, there is so much more than just that. We can take something that is traumatic, is a traumatic experience in our collective American history. 
and we can shift it. We can send healing. We can embody love and send love. And who do we send love to? Well, we can start with sending love to the land, allowing ourselves to connect to the land that we are on. And some native populations, actually all of them, yeah, all of them are not in their native lands. They were pushed to reservation, to another reservation, and they've all but, their ways of life have all but been eradicated through barbaric and heinous practices. I mean, I was watching an episode and it, it, it's still bringing me to tears. The fact that, I don't know if this is still being done, but Native American women on reservations that went to the free clinic to get abortions, they would get forced hysterectomies. And that is, you can hear me in my voice. It's incredibly traumatic that the controlling population forced women to give up their fertility, to give up their ability to create. And some maybe weren't even told that that was part of the deal. Think about it. That's, that's a level of fucked upness that I can't even begin to fathom. I can't even begin to understand the mentality of a person doing that to another. And if we go further back in time, there were breeding centers where slave owners, plantation owners would breed, force breed their slaves and sell them, sell the children off away from their mothers. That's a level of trauma that's a whole nother level of trauma. But I'm bringing all of this up because this is all, this is what is held in the collective consciousness of being American. So whether you, whether your family came to this country after slavery was abolished, your family is still a part of it. Whether your family came in way before and were pilgrims of the Mayflower and committed the genocide like themselves. It's still in you. And it is something that we all need to look at because we all have the tendency, we all have the ability to, to have an out of whack solar plexus, to have a sense of power and control that is not not balanced, not harmonized. And what do I mean by not balanced, not harmonized? I mean that you choose to use your power to control, to manipulate, to subjugate another being, to suppress their own free will and their own ability to express their unique soul essence. That is what I mean by an imbalanced solar plexus. And it can also be an imbalanced sacral chakra because there are many women and probably men too, because I'm sure this is, this can happen either way that use their sexuality to control, to manipulate, to subjugate, to get their way. And again, this is a misuse of your creative power. You can, you can see, I hope how this is not in harmony with the divine flow. This is not like the divine doesn't misuse like the div- in, in terms of unity consciousness god goddess the infinite creation that we are all a part of there is no imbalance in creation everything is in harmony everything is in alignment everything is in love everything is in flow so even if it may look disharmonious harmonious in one particular moment it is still flowing into an equilibrium it is flowing into union it is flowing into harmony and this is what we need to work on because we can be angry 
oh, my family were slaves. My family were slave owners. My family were plantation, um, what are they called, overseers. We can be angry and we can take it out on everything around us and think that the way that we the way that we need to go about being becoming whole again because of those injustices is to perpetuate injustices against someone else and that's not again that's that's a disharmonious expression or we can choose to view the circumstances as something that was part of our evolution. It was something that we needed to learn so we can stand in our sovereignty, stand in our power, really know what our power is and how to use it. And move from a place of love, of truly nourishing ourselves, of truly healing Because whenever we act out from a place of our trauma, we're only perpetuating the same cycle. That's what we're doing, whether we know it or not. So bringing healing to the land, connecting with the land, saying a prayer for all the lives that were lost in every point in time as part of our thanksgiving prayer sending healing to the populations that were forcibly displaced to the populations that were forcibly taken from their lands and brought over here sending healing sending love bringing everything back into union I mean, my family is Spanish, some Inca, Peruvian. I have some African, West African, um, some North African, Middle Eastern, Egyptian blood, Sephardic. Um, Those are my bloodlines in my DNA. And for many years, I was incredibly upset and angry. I was very angry at the injustice of at the injustice of the Spanish part of my blood coming in and subjugating and controlling and and decimating the native populations the disrespect of the of the land that they went on I was furious I was furious at the Catholic Church for the atrocities they committed, the inquisition, the the indoctrination, all of it. I was angry. I was furious. Because in my in my mind, in in my heart, I didn't understand. I still have a trouble understanding how people can how human beings can be that that manipulative, that calculating, that evil. That evil. Because that, to me, those actions of dehumanizing people, not seeing them as one, as equal to you and equal to God, Goddess, that's evil. Separation from our oneness, our infinity. Force separation. That's sin. That's how Yeshua defined sin. So I was very angry for many years. I could not set foot in a church. Because every time I would set foot in a church, all I would see is the stolen gold, the stolen silver, the lives that were lost. And I would feel it in my body. When I went to the Inquisition Museum in Sevilla, I I had a visceral reaction in my body to those times. I felt the pain. I felt the suffering. I felt the trauma. And it made me mad. It made me incredibly angry. And I I couldn't even begin to fathom how 
Now I can un understand to a degree. It's a distortion of power. This is why when I was just in Granada on my pilgrimage, I went to the, um, the tomb of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, who started the Inquisition, <laughs> and I did a prayer. Like I, I cleared the energy. And when I was there, I was physically sick. Like I literally felt like throwing up being in that space with those bones because I felt the trauma that they caused. I felt a distortion of power that they felt. They weren't in their own power. They were being manipulated and hijacked and forced to distort what power is because power is not having power of an, over another being. Power is self-mastery. Power is self-evolution. Power is standing in your power, in your sovereignty, and being in your truth. That has nothing to do with someone else. That has nothing to do with you imposing your beliefs on someone else or your desires or your whatever, culture. Pick, pick whatever. doesn't matter. That's not what it is. True power is self-mastery. True power is this constant evolution of self-awareness, bringing yourself to deeper and deeper levels of consciousness, of awareness, so you can stand in your power and in your sovereignty and in your truth and speak your truth from that heart-centered space without allowing that to be distorted in such a way that you feel you have, you're better than anyone else or you have power or you should be controlling anything outside of you. The only thing you can control is yourself. That is the truth of it. We can think we control other people, but in reality, we don't. And in reality, that's not being in harmony with the divine. So during this time, as we are going into this Thanksgiving holiday, I invite you to really look Allow yourself to see and perceive clearly. Do your best to whatever triggers you. Take a deep breath and ask yourself, is what I am, is the way I am about to react coming from trauma and my suffering and everything that I've been through and everything my perspective is being colored by the past or am I in this moment willing to create a new reality to shift into another level one that is more harmonious one that promotes more peace and more unity one that promotes more respect because we have to remember, we have to remember compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, understanding that we are all doing our best. And even yourself, you are not the same person you were 30 minutes ago. You're not the same person you were yesterday. And you're not the same person you were 10 years ago. So why are you and I'm including myself in this, beating yourself up for past mistakes or past actions, not even mistakes. Let's not even call them mistakes because they're not mistakes. We were operating from the level of consciousness that we were at in that moment in time. There is, there is no way we could have acted from any other place of consciousness because we were in that present moment. So to constantly be thinking about the future or the past and thinking coulda, woulda, shoulda. That's denying yourself the opportunity to make the most of this present moment. To truly bring love and harmony and peace and acceptance and forgiveness and joy into this present moment. Into this moment. Because this moment, right here, right now, right now, right now, this is the only moment that matters. Because this is the moment from which we create. And we can create disunity, disharmony, chaos, destruction. Or we can create love. Or we can create peace and unity and oneness. 
and love. It's all up to us. And sending healing to the land wherever you are connecting with the land. Understanding that many people have walked this land before you. And there is wisdom in those footsteps. There is wisdom in the soil. There is wisdom in the plants and the trees and the birds and the bees. And the butterflies and the owl and the fox and the wolf and the bear. There is wisdom in all living creatures. There is wisdom in you if you choose to align and connect and receive. Now is the time we cannot anchor in the higher frequencies if we are not loving ourselves, if we are not kind to ourselves, if we are not nurturing ourselves, if we are not doing the same, everything that I just mentioned to one another, if we are constantly living in a space of being triggered and of acting out and of basically pointing the finger when someone says something we don't like, oh, you must be filled with hate. What if what if the person pointing something out to you is simpre, simply at a different level of consciousness and awareness than you are now? So they have a different perspective on what is going on. Now, that may be valid. That may not be valid for you. But can you really negate and throw shade on that other person's level of consciousness? No. Because you you're not at their level of consciousness. They are, they're saying something for a reason. And when we receive that, our initial response may be to be incredibly fucking triggered because they are threatening the way that we view our lives and the way that we have acted and the actions we've taken part of until this moment now. So we feel that that person over there telling us whatever they're telling us is judging us. And we're so married to our perspective that we refuse to entertain the possibility that maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's another way that we can do what we do and it will actually bring us to a higher level. It's possible. It's possible that what someone is saying that triggers us is truly coming from a space of love. However, because it threatens our idea of who we are and it threatens our vision of the life that we have created, our little box, we don't want to see it that way. But that doesn't mean that there isn't truth in what is being said. And this is what we have to remember. That every human being has a different level of consciousness, a different awareness. And some of them may be more advanced than you. Doesn't mean they're better. Some of them may be less advanced than you. Some of them may be trying to wake your ass up. The house is on fire. Wake the fuck up. But you don't want to hear it because you're comfortable in the warmth of the fire. You're about to dive off a cliff, but you don't want to hear it because you're happy surrounded amongst your little group of people that are heading in the same direction. You see how this can be dangerous for all of us. To constantly think that only our perception is the correct one. That's not evolution. That's not growth. That's not expansion. However, if we open ourselves up and instead of being triggered and throwing rocks at the person who's sounding the alarm, we were to sit with it. Align with your heart, as I always say. Align with your heart. And receive. Like, okay. 
what is this person really trying to tell me? What is this circumstance really trying to tell me? How am I being narrow-minded and married and set in my ways? What if I entertain that possibility right there? What would, what would my life look like if I shifted just a little bit? And maybe the information is completely invalid for you. Maybe you're so married to your suffering and your pain and the way you've been doing things that you don't want to change. And there are many people like that. They would prefer to complain than to actually fix what they have to complain about. Because then they wouldn't, I don't know, what, what do you get if you're constantly complaining and life constantly sucks? Um, validation or you get, you know, sympathy or you get um, pity. I don't know. But every person is getting something from the way that they are interacting in the world. And if they were to do things differently, they don't know who they'd be. And that scares them. This is why everyone is threatened by other perspectives and other ways of being and doing because they're afraid that, oh, if that person is right, then I'm not doing this life thing right. That's not what that means though. That person is just showing you a different way of being. Now, whether it is applicable for you, whether it is valid for you, whether it is what you need at this time, that is something else. And that is something only you can find out. But that doesn't mean that there is not value in entertaining and opening yourself up to the possibilities because there are infinite ways to do this life thing. There are infinite ways to grow. There are infinite directions to create and to advance and to evolve. The key is finding the one that is the most harmonious for you, that is the most suitable for your soul, for your mission and your purpose. So this holiday season, bring love wherever you are. When you're triggered, stop. Just stop. Like, okay, what's triggering me about this person? And ask yourself, is it possible? What if I were to entertain that perspective? How would that change me? Do I want to change like that? Ask questions. Let's not be so quick to make up our minds. We see one little snippet on whatever, and we think that that's the truth. Let's dig deeper. Let's go within. Let's see if something can make our lives better can create more harmony and more love and more expansion for us. Let's bring that curiosity into our lives. Let's stop thinking that we know it all. And let's stop being married to being right. Shit, I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, learning experience growth, growth opportunity. Let's just do this. Let's do this life thing joyfully. Let's do it creating peace and abundance and harmony and beauty and unity. Let's do this creating unity. Let's do this loving one another. Let's do this uplifting one another. And integrating those parts of ourselves that make us angry. The Spanish part of myself made me angry for many years. Years. Now, I've come into union with that aspect of me. It's part of my blood. It's part of what I needed to experience and to evolve and to grow as a soul. And it's part of my family's collective evolution. And it is beautiful. Because this is what we signed up for. We signed up to come into this incarnation 
in the family, in the country that we chose in order to experience what life would be like in this way. But seek harmony. Seek harmony. Seek wisdom. It's within you. Connect with the land. Let's honor the land. Celebrate whatever you wish to celebrate. Let's celebrate life. Let's celebrate love. Let's create unity. And wherever we are on this holiday, let's send love and grace and forgiveness and healing to the land, to the earth to the people who have lived here way before us and who will live here after us. Let's send healing and peace and unity and love. Because those are the frequencies that are needed at this time. There is enough strife. There is enough anger. There is way too much in my opinion. It's time for love. It's time for harmony. It's time for peace. And it's time for unity. It's time for unity. I am wishing you a beautiful Thanksgiving holiday if you are in the U.S. I'm wishing you a beautiful family holiday. A beautiful time with your loved ones. Because we're only in this current incarnation once. We can only experience what we can through this physical vessel once. We'll have a different one next lifetime, different situations. Love the skin you're in. Love the family you chose. Love the people around you. This is unity. Love your connection to the Divine Mother Father. Allah, God Goddess. Love, forgive, bless, and honor, and cherish yourself and one another. Happy holidays. Many blessings to you. May the light of the divine shine within you, through you, and express through your heart and your voice. Have a blessed day. And as always, up next, we will have the sound activation that will focus on gratitude, on love, on healing, and on forgiveness. So do join me for that. Have a blessed day. Ahava.